Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? I love it. I love being out. I did not know what to do during COVID. Uh, my neighbor coughed, so I shot him. Uh, <laughs> That was all I had. I was being very careful. Um, how many people here tonight are single? Yeah. Single and on the dating apps? Oh. No, just me and that guy. All right. I think a lot of you are lying because uh, I've seen you on there. I'm on the dating apps. My profile says, hi, it's nice to meet you. I've already lost interest. <laughs> because it happens that fast. You know what, you can tell how picky you are by how far away the men in the app are getting. The other day I was like, wow, this guy is like 5,000 miles away. Uh, something must be wrong with my settings. Nope. Turns out I left swipe all in North America. <laughs> Working my way through Asia now, that's something. I'll tell you this, ladies. If you want to seduce any man over 40, this is all you have to do. You have to look him straight in the eye and in your sexiest voice say, hey, before we do anything, do you want to take a nap? <laughs> that gets him every time. I do well on the apps, you know why? Because I am not beautiful, I am attainable. That is what you want to be. That's what you want to be. Think about it. It's like the lottery. Everybody knows they're going to lose the Powerball, but you hand them a scratcher and they're like, I could win. I'm a scratcher. Right? You can't afford beachfront property in Hawaii, but an above ground pool in Ogden? Get my flip flops. I'm an above ground pool in Ogden. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was married to a hypnotist once, I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get married. I'm not against marriage. I just think the problem with it is some men live for years. <laughs> You know what I mean? If they were like goldfish, I'd be in. But uh, you could get stuck. And some uh, cultures have multiple wives, you know? And people are always worried about the woman. Oh, they're so oppressed. I don't think so. I remember when I was a kid, if you had asked my mom, hey, would you like another woman to come in here and listen to your husband's crap for a couple of nights? She would have said, when can she start? <laughs> Right? And this doesn't work on the flip side. It does not at all. You'll never see a woman look at her husband and say, hey, you know what I need? Five more of those. That's what I need. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Anyone else having this trouble? They can't remember anything? And Right? All of a sudden, like the universe expanded too fast and our little brains couldn't catch up? The other day I put on an old coat. I reached in the pocket. There were like 70 Kleenex some pop rocks and some Vaseline and I thought I don't even want to remember what happened there because <laughs> that probably didn't work in my favor whatever that was <laughs> I can't remember anything I went to get a facial couldn't remember if it was a facial or a massage and the facialist walked in and said why are your pants off <laughs> and I said I don't know the dentist asked me the same thing uh, Everyone is so nosy all of a sudden. I don't know what I'm doing. The other day I was staring at a picture of Jesus and I swear in his face, I saw the image of a piece of toast. <laughs> that, that joke's not for everyone. But, uh, the people that get it, pass it on. See, he's explaining it to her right there. See, it's like a little flip. I have to watch, I don't have my, I have to watch my time tonight. I left my parents in a corn maze. I, uh... See, this is what happens when you get 17 vaccines. Uh... Was that too much? Was that? So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a savant. I'm a tree savant. I can name any tree. Uh, the tree in front of my house is Steve. Uh... <laughs> This is 
what we got to do, folks. We just got to enjoy ourselves. We can't worry. Life is too hard, isn't it? I know. I have a friend worried about everything. She's in perfect health, terrified she's going to die of cancer. I said to her, don't worry about cancer. Have you seen your driving? <laughs> You're going to die in a ball of flames. Relax. <laughs> Right, but you can't be stupid. I ride a bike in Los Angeles, that's very dangerous, but I have a whole safety outfit, and my friends say I look ridiculous, but here's what I figure. People don't think twice about hitting a 50-year-old woman on a bike, but no one wants to kill the last unicorn. <laughs> Did you explain that one to her too? That's the odd. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, keep helping people. I, uh, I'm a spiritual person with anger issues. Uh, anyone else? Right? That means I can clear your chakras and screw up your aura all in one mood swing. I can do that. I do. I carry crystals with me everywhere. I carry a crystal called hematite because that gets rid of negativity, especially when you hit someone right in the forehead with it. <laughs> And then I carry one called black tourmaline, that's for protection. You use that with lavender oil in a taser, and <laughs> you should be fine. Uh, but I'm definitely, I'm trying to be a better person. I'm learning about my shadow side. You know what that is? That's where you take all your rage and anger and you shove it down and save it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and, Right, I'm trying to meditate. That's very hard, you know why? Because of the music, right? The music is always an ocean or a river or a thunderstorm, all very wet. I say, if you wanna help me meditate, you gotta make the tape sound of things that are relaxing to me, right? Like how about the sound of the police taking my neighbors away? That's... <laughs> How about the school bus taking the children on a month-long field trip? That! How about that little banging noise your, your ex-boyfriend makes when he wants you to let him out of the trunk? That! That's a good sound. I don't know. I worry about the world. I don't believe in war or instant pudding. Um, <laughs> I think you should be suspicious of anyone who needs pudding immediately. That's... <laughs> that seems bad. And I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but since there's no... Since we had the rise in instant pudding, there's no more sea monkeys. I'm just saying. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Coincidence. I don't think we're ever not going to have war, though. I don't think human beings will ever get along. And you know why? Because every person, every country, every religion thinks their God is right. But that makes sense. You want to worship a confident God that you think is right. You wouldn't go to a church if you were like, hey, what is your God like? And the guy went, really <laughs> insecure, actually. Uh, <laughs> He mumbles a lot. We're not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> really? Is he an all-knowing God? He knows enough. <laughs> he is not Jeopardy smart. He's Wheel of Fortune smart. <laughs> wow, did he send his son to die for my sins? Son-in-law. <laughs> His son-in-law, no one liked him. Now we're stuck with all these what would Murray do bracelets. <laughs> I don't know why that joke was so funny to you, sir, but I'll take it. I don't know, we're never gonna get along. My family doesn't get along with anyone, you know? I just got back from my father's funeral. Uh, oh, he didn't die. He wanted to hold it while he was alive, so after the eulogy, he could give a rebuttal. <laughs> he doesn't get along with any. My mom has pre-traumatic stress syndrome. That's where she worries before it even happens, right? 
Sometimes it doesn't even happen and she's freaked out about it. Karen, I had the worst day today. I almost got hit by a bus had I been two inches to the left. Karen, I almost fell down a flight of stairs today. It was so scary if I had only been two inches to the left. Then my father will call me. Karen, I had the worst day today if your mother had only been two inches to the left. I know that's my parents. They're getting older. I'm trying to get them into assisted living for their own safety, because uh, they don't. If they don't go, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> they think they're funny. They have matching "Do Not Resuscitate" T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, with little arrows pointing at each other. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wait! I have to show you guys something. Hold on. Um, so this is my, I have to show you my little dog, Courage, and there's a reason why. Well, his name used to be Courage, but now that dogs can't fly free anymore, I bring him on stage, and his new name is Tax Deduction. <laughs> this is his whole act. He's 18, he's almost old enough to drink alcohol out of the toilet. <laughs> did that with dogs, you know what I mean? Because now, I don't know if you've noticed, since there's no more emotional support animals, a lot of flight attendants have been getting punched in the face lately. <laughs> this is the big danger right here. Uh, I don't know, they want me to carry a doctor's note to explain why I'm flying with him. I think people should have to carry doctor's notes to explain why they're flying with children. <laughs> Right, because you know what my dog has never done? He's never sung the theme to Frozen the whole entire flight. <laughs> Are you done, boss? All right, that's the boss. <laughs> I, know that, I know that takes a minute, but it saves me hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Saving money, that's what. She should have just shown us coupons the whole time. We were so excited. <laughs> hey, have you guys ever done this? Have you ever gotten a phone call that was a wrong number and just for a minute you think maybe this is the right number and I have multiple personalities? <laughs> I know the other day I got a phone call. Hi, we were calling to see if Mary enjoyed her stay at the Bellagio. And I was like, Mary went to Vegas, she has all the fun. <laughs> The other night I got a phone call and there were so many numbers across the front of the screen, I thought I better answer this because it could be from the future. <laughs> Turns out it was a Japanese robocall, so either I'm being contacted by Japanese computers in the future or I just bought a timeshare in Nagasaki. Uh, <laughs> one of those things happened. <laughs> So I, uh, I'm not a good driver, uh, I hate driving. I was driving over here and I changed lanes and some guy yelled, hey, your blinker wasn't on. And I yelled, don't worry, neither are my glasses. Uh, I can't see anything. I don't know anything about cars. All I know is I'm glad they stopped making that Hummer car. Yeah, that's a war vehicle. Folks, if you need a war vehicle to get around town, maybe you should work on your people skills. <laughs> And I don't know if I'm supposed to be afraid of a guy driving a Hummer, because I'm not. I'm more afraid of a guy driving a 1990 Geo Metro, because that guy has nothing to lose. <laughs> he has no job, he has no girlfriend. He has made a big mistake and is sticking with it. And all I know about cars are that men are waiting for them to break down. They're always checking fluids and oils and air, and women think cars should run forever. <laughs> I'm in complete denial about my car. People are like, hey, what's that light on your dashboard? And I'm like, that is for when I'm too hard on myself. It reminds me to take a break. <laughs> and oh, look, the little teapot came on. That means we're near a Starbucks. <laughs> I don't even know what that check engine light, that's like, guess how many jelly beans are in the jar? I have no idea. <laughs> but I always pull over and pop the hood like it's something I'll see right away. Like, oh look, a zipper was down. <laughs>
<laughs> and I was driving a while, and I hit a deer. How many people by round of applause have ever hit a deer when they were driving? <laughs> right? I can't believe how fast it happened. Here it is in slow motion. No deer on the hood. Deer on the hood. That's how it happened. <laughs> And it wasn't a very smart deer because it wasn't anywhere near the deer crossing signs. Uh, and if they're not gonna put those up, I don't know what, if they're not reading them. And then someone said to me, you know, the deer are hypnotized by the headlights. And I thought, well, that can't be true because you know if you could hypnotize a deer, some redneck would have a house full of them. <laughs> doing laundry and ironing. A little skirt. I can't remember anything. I'm so paranoid all of a sudden. The other day I was sure the aliens had implanted a tracking device in me, uh, but it just turned out to be a loose Frito in my underwear. <laughs> so now I have to figure out why the aliens are putting Fritos in my underwear. That's terrifying. I was at a UFO convention, you know, and this lady comes up to me and she goes, you have alien DNA. And I said, tell me more. <laughs> and she said, there's a race of aliens. They're called Palladians. They're a peace loving people with smooth skin and they're beautiful. You're not one of those. <laughs> Apparently, I'm from Orion. She said, actually, you are a captain in the Orion Interplanetary Army. And I said, finally, someone has taken me seriously. <laughs> so I immediately called my sister and said, hey, I just found out I'm a captain in the Orion Interplanetary Army. And she said, Orion is a constellation, not a planet. And I said, really? That's all you saw wrong with that statement? <laughs> But I do all kinds of paranormal things. I read tarot cards during the day. That's my job. Because I believe a secure retirement plan should be made of magic. <laughs> I do. I read tarot cards. That's a hard job. People don't want to hear the truth. Just the other day, I told this woman, you need to leave that man. He's crazy. And she said, I know, but he's still your father. <laughs> I know, I, I'm a ghost hunter. Everywhere I go, people always go to me, Karen, you gotta go to this hotel room. It's haunted by a woman that died in her wedding dress. Karen, you gotta go to the train station. It's haunted by a woman jumped in front of the train in her wedding dress. Karen, you gotta go to the store. It's haunted by a woman trying to buy a wedding dress. <laughs> Ladies, do we need more reasons not to get married? <laughs> you know what phone call I never get? Karen, you gotta help us out. Our house is haunted by the ghost of a single woman who had a great career and no kids. <laughs> and don't use a Ouija board. Ouija boards are bad. Someone told me a Ouija board will scream if you burn it. I, but I found out that's only true if you light it on fire while it's still in your friend's lap. <laughs> And people give me haunted objects all the time, right? Like this one friend gave me a haunted mirror. It's a big mirror and it stands on its own, you know, kind of creepy looking. Not a kind mirror, right? Ladies know what I'm talking about. Kind mirror in the nightclub with the soft lighting makes you look very young and pretty. This is a mean mirror. <laughs> mean mirror makes you look like what you look like. <laughs> So I don't like the mean mirror. I push it over the side. A friend of mine comes over. She's a medium, right? And uh, alcoholic. <laughs> and a life coach. <laughs> and she says, you know, there's a little boy looking at you from the other side of that mirror. I know, isn't that awful? I hate children. <laughs> I do everything to childproof my house. I have pills and sharp objects everywhere. Power tools, Tide Pods, whatever it takes. So parents never bring them back. 
and now I have this. So here's what I found out. I found out mirrors are actually portals to another time. So I said to my friend, where did you get that mirror? He got it from his grandma, who got it when she worked in elementary school in the 1920s, which means somewhere back in time. A teacher says to a student, what are you looking at? And the kid says, I'm not sure, but I think it's a naked lady pulling Fritos out of her underwear. <laughs> Karen, and thanks for watching my special. I really appreciate that. I hope I made you laugh. Now here's the part where you can tip me. That's awesome. You can tip a dollar. You can tip $10. You can tip a million dollars. That million dollars would be appreciated quite a bit because I'm trying to buy a house and you can't believe how expensive it's going to be to insulate the whole thing with aluminum foil to avoid the negative alien agenda. Thank you.